everyone. Last week we saw how baptism is a pivotal key sacrament, but a part of me says that a good Christian marriage should stand alongside it. If the marriage is celebrated between spouses who have faith in God and takes place in the church, then there's a good chance that their children will be baptised and subsequently brought up with an active faith. They will follow in the footsteps of their parents. I think it's interesting to note from today's Gospel that Jesus performed his very first miracle at a wedding do. This is an indication of the high esteem in which he held it. The Catholic Church also places marriage high up on its agenda. It is included as one of its seven sacraments. It may be the last on the list, but it's by no means the least. Marriage is a very significant moment in a person's life and not to be taken lightly. Now, just as Jesus laid down his life for his bride, the church, on the cross, so... Metaphorically speaking, married couples lay down their lives for each other. But in many inst instances, this laying down of one's life doesn't always materialise. I often say to engaged couples that some people marry at the church, while others <coughs> marry in the church. There's a world of difference between the two. At the church means more attention is paid to the kind of building where the wedding is to take place, rather than being a committed member of the said same church community. In the church, on the other hand, means that the couple are already members of the believing community, and their marriage is an extension of their faith in Jesus, whom they will believe will sustain them throughout their married life together. The couple in today's Gospel had Jesus and Mary top of the list of their invited guests. If Jesus and Mary have pride of place in the life of the married couple, then despite their human setbacks, all will turn out well as it did for the couple at Cana. Much to their delight, Jesus not only changed a small amount of water into any old wine, but a huge amount into the very best conclusion we can draw from this is that if he is close to the spouses the strains and stresses of family life won't get them down but actually will be opportunities for greater closeness as a couple and also along with that they will not be tempted to give up when trials come We hear a lot these days about alternative family setups and those who ditch marriage in favour of cohabitation, a life of cohabitation. If this happens, unlike the couple at Cana, we keep Jesus and Mary firmly at bay, keep them at a distance, because this way of life contravenes the true nature of conjugal love. A fundamental ingredient of married love is the lifelong commitment a man and a woman make to each other on their wedding day. Jesus even stresses it elsewhere in the Gospel when he says, Anyone who puts his hand to the plough and looks back is not fit for the kingdom. And that applies to marriage as much as to any other vocation, even the priesthood. At the end of the Gospel today, it says that Jesus let his glory be seen and the disciples believed in him. Society today, more than ever, needs spouses to let the glory or the beauty of their marriage be seen so that the younger generation will be moved to follow in their footsteps. Thank you all very much for listening. God bless you all. Oh